Hello, everybody. Welcome to Boss Rush at Night E3 2021, night two of E3 coverage. I'm your host, Corey Derrigan, alongside me. Tonight is the host of Arsenal X, the wise Wisconsinite, Mr. Jesse Douglas. How's it going, everyone? Also joining us is the head of Boss Rush Entertainment, Justin Beavers, illegitimate. Come on, again, two nights. Adopted cousin. Come on. <laughs> at least he's consistent. You know- at least he's consistent, but it's consistently bad. I'm just gonna keep adding words. <laughs> Look, now you're not only Justin Bieber's cousin, you're now illegitimate and adopted. So Well, I'm adopted in real life too, so that works. Oh, cool. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Everybody needs love. Um also <laughs> 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 also joining us, uh, the the up and coming YouTube star from Block's Games Reviews. He also writes for Boss Rush Network. Block, hi Block. Star is going way too far. No, dude, I watched your YouTube channel the other night for three hours while I was editing stuff. It would. I fell down. I don't down. know if I have three hours of content, but thank you. No, you do. <laughs> I filled three hours. It was like two forty-five, but. Still. Now see. See. <laughs> I watched all of your Trash or Treasure videos. I watched most of your RPG v- reviews. And I started watching the horror ones, and I'm like, no, I'm out. I don't do horror he got, he got too scared. I don't do the, spooky. Grab well, by the goldies. Although, the, the, although the first one I watched was Costume Quest, so I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, the only one of us that isn't a scary white dude we have <laughs> from our writing team also an award-winning author i'm told stephanie hi hi stephanie making sure that i bring diversity to the group yes good job good job <laughs> check that box. We're, we're okay on that front uh, i'm so, so i don't know i got kind of a sunburn today that's diverse from my normal pasty pale white self so <laughs> this is yeah, never going to air <laughs> we just, let's just acknowledge that now this is never going to oh air. we're live it's it's airing right now uh oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are watching people are are i don't know if they're laughing or cringing or s- somewhere in between yeah. i don't know maybe both yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pat from EXP cast is in the chat. Hi, Pat. C. Waller, 2010. I don't know who that is, but he's making fun of Logan, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, you're muted, by the way. He was holding in. The... Yeah, I was holding in. Man. I was, I was, I was making you savor. He was on self-muting. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was self-muting this time self-muting. compared to the normal, you know. <laughs> Uh, let everyone else talk. For... Corey's like uh, Tony Reality on Around the Horn, and it's just a constant mute on mine. Mm-hmm. So. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm also the, I'm also the guy on uh, what was the show? Uh, PTI, who will read your mistakes at the end of the show. Again, Tony Reality. That's the same guy. Is it, it is? You're right. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> Look, man, it's been a while since I watched Wait, ESPN. So. 2000 ESPN, dude. I don't know. Sorry, I just I did watch the Stuart Scott Michael Jordan flu game uh, highlight the other night. That was pretty good. Rest in peace, Stuart Scott. What a great guy. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, we're not here to talk about sports. We're here to talk about the official start of E3 was today. Uh, man, dude, I, when Ooh. I woke up this morning, that 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 Twitter chat was on fire because of Mario Rabbids. I was like, uh, I woke up, I rolled over, and I just like checked my phone, and all of a sudden, I'm, it's, I saw it on Twitter. I'm like, the, the official Nintendo site opened the Mario Rabbids uh, portal or whatever, and I was like, oh my gosh! And I, I was like, I put it in the chat because I knew I had to get my kids ready first. And I'm like, somebody write this. I can get to it in like an hour if somebody can. And then like, you know, an hour later, I'm sitting there furiously typing with one kid in one arm, and the other one is you know, on the ground trying to say she doesn't want to eat. And I'm just typing with one hand, like, gotta get this up. <laughs> so uh, that was, 
that was that was the start of E3. So uh, parenting at its finest. I know, man. It's like a... well, he doesn't tell you that his children are seventeen and twenty-three. Oh so God, that makes, it, <laughs> that makes that story even better. God, I wish one would be out and one would be on their way out. Uh, I'm just kidding. I like my kids on you know certain times of day, like when they're sleeping. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, we we started a little late because. Uh, we did have a crisis. My child fell and cut her leg on a, on our clo- on her closet, so that was fun. Uh, she's fine though. It worked she's fine. Well. She's she's tough kid. She uh yeah. she walked it off. It builds character. Yeah, you know. Took a salt tablet. And just, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yep. So, uh, but how did everybody feel about day one of E three overall? Before we kind of dive into uh, the Ubisoft conference, because that was. I feel like that was the biggest thing that happened today, and some people would argue that was the only thing that happened today. But uh, it was it was pretty big. There's a lot of stuff shown, a lot of a lot of interesting, cool new stuff. Ubisoft was consistently good. I liked it. Like the show was. I mean, yeah, a few pacing issues, but overall, they showed stuff I cared about. And the end of the Ubisoft conference made the whole thing a lot better for me. I mean, Riders of Public was cool, but getting Avatar. Uh, Frontiers of Pandora. I'm in. So I'm that's hooked. that's the division team, right? Making yeah, it's division team working on uh, uh, Frontiers of Pandora. Yeah. Right. So that's the that's like an open. I'm assuming it's open world. It's it's next. It's current gen only. They confirmed. Uh, uh, um, so this game is going to be, <laughs> no pun intended, massive. Right. Josh and I were also talking. It's like it might be part of the Inquisition team as well. Um, because they they aren't they aren't known to be working on anything major, and we know part of that team did get secluded to do something else. And there's elements like in that trailer, I was like, there there were parts of it, especially with the creature design, that was like, man, that looks exactly like Dragon Age. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. yeah, it was it was cool though. I I'm way more interested in that game than I am the 900 sequels that are in development for the movie. Right. Uh, but yeah, they showed a lot of Far Cry. That mm-hmm. that season pass looks interesting. Revisiting the villains, you know. Uh, also, Far Cry Blood Dragon HD remastered or whatever they're calling it is that's a win. That's a win right there. That's worth the season pass. So, uh, no new Assassin's yeah, Creed. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, Jesse. You, I know you're oh. a big Far Cry guy. Yeah, like I. Well, like, I've played all of them, but honestly, like, I know a lot of people didn't like 5, but 5 today is still by far my favorite. Like, I, I, I'm also not, like, super, um, I don't care too much about, about story stuff, like, like, I mean, like, all, in my opinion, all their stories are pretty weird and crazy in some Mm -hmm. way. And, like, I just, I loved, I just kind of liked the setting of these, like, these just, you know, crazy people that are, like, a cult, you know, like, cult people. Like, I just found all of it hilarious. And then when they started mixing in the, like, you know, like, this, like, the drug stuff and, like, you know, like, the mythic, mystical kind of, like, you know, like, weird, just making it even weirder. Like I just absolutely loved all of it. I I just was completely in for it. So, like I for me like I tried going back and playing four again after playing five, and I just like the everything gameplay wise was improved in in five. Um. So I'm I just really I'm I'm excited to see what they you know what they kept as far as the mechanics of five and what they improved on and. And you know, and if it's if it's like the last games, like it seems like every game they kind of improved and got better with each one. So yeah. I'm I'm just really I'm just really looking forward to see what they what they did to improve on you know on the last one. Even though I thought it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I will say is you know for the Far Cry franchise, that's just personally not my you know type of game that I get into. I think it's like a first person mm-hmm. shooter. But, yeah. you know, I, I did cover it today, and when I was watching that extended cinematic trailer, I don't know if we'll get more into that later, 
Um, but man, did it want me to get invested in this franchise, you know, yeah. and, and that, that, I think that says something if it wants to attract people that don't usually play that genre or whatever, like mm-hmm. I love the mm-hmm. villain. I, I have a thing with villains. If they can create a good villain, mm-hmm. that's it. You know, take my money. I will get <laughs> the gold edition with the season pass. I'm invested. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, uh, <clears throat> that this seems like the, the story is going to be way more important to the, the, the game than it has been in the past. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know people enjoy the story, right? But yeah. uh, this th- this yeah, seems like it's taking it to a whole nother level. I was actually way yeah. more interested in this than five, and uh, you know, four got me interested a little bit, uh, but I never got it. Three was okay, right? But I I know like three and four are people's favorites. Five you, people can go either way on it. I feel like Jesse, I know you liked it a lot, but yeah. this really was like, man, they want you to be invested in. Not just this character, but the villain, and you know what's going on. Obviously, it's some sort of, uh, you know, Cuban. Uh, uh, what do you call it? You know, like a not a metaphor. That's a, I can't think of the word. I'm real dumb right now. Uh, but it it just looks really cool. It looks it it got me invested in a franchise that I'm not invested in. And I think that that's a good. Mm. Uh, yep. a, a good win for whoever's doing PR in this game. Whoever cut the trailer for this game. Uh, it was cool. So, and isn't this a continuation of four? Yeah, is it's, it? It's, yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah. it's, well, it's really take it, place like, at least part of the four. story does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. The yeah, because mm-hmm. four because four is kind of takes place in the same same like the same area, but yeah, this is supposed to be a continuation because like most people love four, like that's most people's favorite. Mm-hmm. It's my yeah, um, it's definitely mine. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like and I like I said I I do appreciate it. Um from a story from a story point for is probably the best one uh for for if you're, you know, care a lot about what what kind of story is being told. Mm-hmm. But like for me, I just when I when I play these kind of games, it's it's my chance to just do whatever I feel like and mm-hmm. just not care about, you know, just, <laughs> like in five, man. Like I, I had this, like one of the the most fun times I had playing that game uh, is I was just fishing, and and then I got into a boat and I just I hit something just perfectly that I launched the boat through the air and just crashed it right into a whole bunch of bad guys and just took a whole bunch nice. of them right out with the boat <laughs> and just like just crazy nonsense like that that. That that's why I love those kind of open world games or sandbox yeah. games. It's just doing whatever I feel like and not caring about, you know, the story. And I think that's kind of why uh, why Breath of the Wild, like you know, it hooked me so much is just because like you don't. There's no like particular way that you really have to play that game. And sometimes I prefer that. And I feel like the Far Cry games have kind of always been where there's just so much going on that you can just kind of do things however you feel like, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love oh. that in an open world game. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll get, we'll get into this run of run of the show in a, in a second. Uh, but it's also not a Ubisoft show without a just dance game being announced. <laughs> and like, yeah. I was like kind of watching it cause we were getting ready to go to a, to a party tonight. And so I was kind of watching, watching it while I was like in the bathroom getting ready and whatever. And like, all of a sudden I just hear like this weird song going on. I'm like, what is, <laughs> what is happening? Like, usually it's like some, like, I don't know, club mix of like Lady Gaga or something. I'm like, what is, yeah. what is happening on this stream? And I'm like, oh man, another Just Dance. Mm-hmm. Just, just Dance. No Wii, wonder... ver- no Wii version this year, guys. Yeah. Sorry. I wonder if, it's clock be... that, that if there's a Just Dance game coming out from Ubisoft do you, every year. Do you guys remember um, that now that's what you call music or whatever? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Aren't they on like, like 734 now or something? <laughs> Do you think this will be like the video game version of it? Because it just seems like they're just it adding... already is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been that way for years. And let me tell you, the yeah. only reason why I have Just Dance 2021 is because you know I, I have friends who have like teenage daughters, and like the only way to like kind of you know get them to like hang out and chill or whatever is I don't know they're really into it, so I ended up buying it, and um, 
I don't know. I, I so I I tried once because I'm like, all right, I gotta not look like a fool in front of these teenagers. So I'm gonna practice a song or two. I'm pretty sure I injured myself. It was so hard. I couldn't <laughs> dance. Couldn't keep up. Damn. I mean, it's not my game, but uh, I yeah. I could say I tried it. Wow. That's well, funny. I'll I'll tell you what I'll let I'll let people in on a secret. I think I feel like this is this is the same oh, for almost most kids. You're. You might as well just put it on on YouTube because my kids played it a whole like two times and they've never touched it and they would rather just watch the songs on YouTube. Like honestly, like it's one of those games where if like all the kid really wants to do is hear the music, we'll just play the videos of someone who played it on YouTube and it yeah. and it's like and if you want to, you can still dance to it because they're yeah. showing mm-hmm. you know everything that's on the screen you essentially can do i mean yeah you don't have the controller or whatever but who cares then you're not getting yelled at that you're not doing good or whatever <laughs> anyway so <laughs> no but that, that's like that's very true i mean that my just dance 2021 got used like once and um I, I really am just curious to know if they really do that well in sales also when you buy the game you only get like an X number of songs and yeah. like I hated almost all the songs, maybe like one from the weekend I yeah. liked. And so I tried their free trial of like the full library. So I'm like, why would I want to pay a subscription to have access to all these songs? So, yeah. but I guess that's how they make their money. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cause that's pretty steep too. It wasn't, yep. it wasn't that cheap for that. Wasn't it's it? Like 60 bucks? It, 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 yeah. It's always been a 60 buck game. Yeah. Yeah. That's a well, no, that's I a mean, game. Service, I know they're doing though. this. I know like they're for the service. Uh, do they have a service? Is that what yeah. we're yeah. talking about? Oh. And it was like thirty well, bucks. Oh. You had to pay something. I thought a month. Yeah. Oh. Gross. Yeah, yeah and it it's and it's for life. Like it's if you want those songs that <laughs> that are in the library, you got to continually pay that monthly fee. Gross. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I thought. I, I mean, oh. at least that's what I thought it was. Hmm. Yep, it is. It's called Ubisoft Just Dance Unlimited, and you know yeah. you can pay day, uh, month, year. But for example, it's thirty bucks a year, just so you can have access to the full catalog. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. got to make that money uh, somehow. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, my my wife has a friend, a, a family of friends that she goes to visit every now and then. They don't play games at all, um, but I went over there just as the pandemic was ending you know it's first time we'd seen them in a year and we go in and uh their teenage daughters are dancing to just dance on the Wii, and it was just dance 19 Mm -hmm. so they keep putting these out on the Wii. so i had to look it up i was like why are they coming out to the Wii? and apparently ubisoft had has continuously donated ways to hospitals and um, and retirement homes and stuff like that with copies of Just Dance, and they do it every year. And so up until, I think, 19, that was the last one, mm-hmm. they keep putting out the Wii's with the, the Just Dance copies, which which I think is, at least that's a good thing, is, a, mm-hmm. is getting people who are maybe in recovery trying to, um, you know, get... get uh, get some mobile again um or in retirement homes or something like that maybe schools i don't, I don't know. know some of those dances are pretty <laughs> intense right <laughs> see grandma We're throwing a hip out, out. Some of those. Yeah. Mm. It was twerking. i don't know yeah there's some pretty oh, there's some pretty hip grandmas out there <laughs> <laughs> grandma popping and popping her popping booty. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like popping we know what the title of this episode is called. <laughs> Grandma's <laughs> popping her booty. Uh, you, you know who's had hip replacement surgeries at that nursing home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. I'm just saying. Uh, so, besides Ubisoft, Gearbox went today. Uh, a little bit more on, what, Tiny Tina, and they went behind the scenes on the movie, which... You know, Kevin Hart not giving Randy Pitchford a high five was pretty hilarious. But that was yeah. That was God, dude. He tries so hard, point. and he's just like, yeah. <sighs> just but. just go away, man. I'm sorry. Like Tiny Tina looks amazing, but Randy Pitchford needs to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they kept he kept saying like, oh, this movie's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. We haven't seen anything from the movie. 
Now, do you I think don't it, know do you think what it's... anybody looks like in costume. <laughs> do I don't you... know if they're going to have, you know, the art style of the movie yet. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think he's going to like it? Like... Do you think he's going to like this movie more or less than the porn he had on that thumb drive he lost? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably less because from that porn he learned something. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it was magical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! Oh, that's never Grandma gonna, popped in her booty. It. <laughs> it, was, um, it was the name of the porno. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I thought it was Mario Hose. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, and then Devolver Digital had their, you know, oh, God. weird mm-hmm. thing. Um, I guess I guess we can start with them. Did did. Did they show anything worth noting? I I didn't get to watch it. They they there usually have something f- weird, or just you know they're just kind of weird. Like last year, didn't they have that uh, digital show floor thing where you could play it for th- free through Steam and you could unlock things for Which them? They're pretty much doing it again. Yeah, are they? Okay, they're a weird company. Uh, Anim Abyss coming to Steam early access on June twenty second. That was really the only thing. Man, I suffered through that 30 minutes, and it was a tough 30 minutes. Uh, that was really the only thing that stood out to me. I mean, the rest of it was chili dogs and weird jokes about the industry. Mm. Uh. I don't know. I like chili dogs. They're, they're what good. you're saying gets better than the Ubisoft pre-show. <sighs> Come on. I don't, even, no, I don't even think so. I don't know. The chili dogs that they were eating looked super dry, so no. No. Oh, <laughs> that, that's, that's disappointing. Hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. See, yeah, I mean, there's, like, I, I haven't, like, I didn't watch the actual thing, but, like, I've just seen, like, kind of seen bits and pieces of some of the games. Like, I, I did kind of like the look of that, that Trek to Yumi or whatever. Hmm. But, and they're, like, I don't know, like, I, cause see, the thing is, is, like, a lot of the times I actually look more forward to seeing some of the uh the more uh the the indie games and yeah. stuff like that because like to this day like uh rhyme is still like one of my all-time favorite games like yeah. I, I've played that hey, go ahead what was oh i i was just gonna say that, that i've played that game like multiple times you know to this day and i just i just love that game and it's there's nothing like you know, breathtaking or whatever about it. It's just like the the way the art style is, and well, and I mean like the music and it like is is probably it's still one of my favorite soundtracks. But like just the way that the music tells the narration, and there's no words, no narration, no nothing, and the music. You know, like I I look for that kind of stuff, and you're not gonna find that in in the big title. You know, big games that are getting all this money thrown at them you're just not gonna get that so i do like i do like watching you know it's a lot of this kind of stuff and and looking for a good uh indie game that's gonna just do something that nothing else is you know and that's Mm -hmm. usually the only place you're gonna find that that thing Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that's why, you know, I wasn't totally crushed, but I really had my hopes up for a couple of those. And another one's Anna Purna. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll talk more about maybe what they had on the Indie Direct. But for Devolver, I mean, I think Devolver's the one that put out Gree and mm-hmm. uh, Katana Zero and way back yeah. then Hotline Miami. So I was like, mm-hmm. let's get something fresh and new and exciting. But I guess not this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how much, I wonder how much the pandemic had to do with that. And then like mm-hmm. them saying, we're Devolver. We have to do something weird this year because we're Devolver. Do we really have anything to show? And then they just, you know, did this. I, I, something tells me that this year feels like a year where people feel like they have to do something, even though like all their stuff's being delayed. You know. Mm-hmm. Do you think that hurts their brand more than? I think a lot of people are getting a pass just because everybody knows what happened the last year and a half. You know, like it's just, mm-hmm. it's just a. Uh, the state of the world, everybody getting so, back on their feet and like E3 coming back and people showing off games feels like a little bit more like another mm-hmm. step towards normalcy. So mm-hmm. there's that. What if they did this next year? 
Yeah, I mean, if they did the same thing next year, I've, like it's it's almost like what we say about Bethesda, although not on that level because obviously Bethesda is a way bigger company. But it's like Bethesda, that first E three they did, it was mm-hmm. really awesome, and they showed a lot, and they it was concise. They showed a lot of great big things, and they're like, yeah, we're coming back next year, and then the next like two years they didn't show anything worth noting. It was like, well. Mm-hmm. You showed DLC for Wolfenstein. You showed this free, free Quake game that nobody played. You you know, like, okay, yeah, you have this Elder Scrolls Blades game. like You know, and they, they, they felt like they had to do something, and everybody ta- brings that up every year, right? And it's like, well, next year if they do that, maybe we could have this conversation again, but I don't know. It could potentially hurt the, a brand, but not to the extent of, like, oh, geez, they're doing one of these again, you know? Right, yeah. So. I mean, how many yeah, how many Nintendo Directs have we watched where, like, do they need a full Direct for that? Or could they have just done, like, the Paper Mario thing where they just released a trailer for this and was like, well, mm-hmm. neat. So. Yeah, like, because, I mean, because, you know, and I think that's the thing is, like, I well, at least for me, like, I put, I, like, I judge, like, you know, how well, like, a, a thing is, depending on, like, for me, I think, I think what's more important is just having, like, uh, different stuff that's gonna appeal to, to multiple people, because, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, I mean, every time that I watch a Nintendo one and they show another, you know, whole hour of what new characters are coming to Smash. I don't care about that game at all, but, you know, like, I I can see, though, that if mm-hmm. if I'm someone who loves that game, yeah, like, it's cool how in-depth they get, you know, talking about that stuff. They did, they did get away from... like that. They did get I, away from know. showing that in the, yeah. the bigger directs, though. They've usually been like, here's the yeah. reveal of the character. If you want to watch this, we're doing another yeah. direct specifically on this character, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Remember the exactly. the year it was revealed, they spent, like, 40 minutes of, like, a 80-minute direct on Smash and, like, characters and yeah. how they play. And it's like, nobody, like, nobody cares about this except for, like three percent of your audience like and i think yeah. they took that feedback to heart and that's why they started doing that but um mm-hmm. yeah so but it's yeah i mean it, that's cool for the people who love that stuff but yeah but yeah you know and i and like i said that's that's not really in my opinion gonna you know make it make it a bad thing you know and yeah. overall but yeah uh all right well we can get into ubisoft if you want because this this was this is pretty much going to be the bulk of our show now, right? I mean, we talked, we didn't talk about <laughs> Gearbox, and we talked a little bit about Devolver. So, Ubisoft had their big Ubisoft forward. Uh, I was actually quite surprised in a good way with their with their event today. I I really liked a lot of the things that I didn't think I was going to like. Like I I really we talked about Far Cry at the top of the show. Looked great. Uh, Riders Republic surprisingly gave me those SSX vibes, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I just like, man, I, I've really wanted a new SSX game for a long time and Riders Republic. And I know steep is on game pass right now. So, uh, and it's by that team. So I might try steep to see if Riders Republic is going to be worth it. I know they're different games, but the, 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 uh, gist of the the game is there so i kind of want to try it out but uh let's let's talk about this pre-show <laughs> i've been hearing a lot of things about do, this pre-show do, do we have to yeah yes we have to talk about how some i don't know if the audio was just the way i was streaming it but you know i think one of the big things we want to just address elf in the room is that those weird like screensaver like intros while we were waiting in between sections where it's just Visuals of someone riding a horse or driving a car or a drone. Riding that a hit drone. A yep, yep, yep. Mm. Almost hitting a building and a plane that sounded like a wet fart, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Man, I the, the, the only two things I saw for the pre-show were Ed texting me, like, super <laughs> early. And he's like, Ninja Turtles are coming to Brawlhalla. I'm like, Cool. What's Brawlhalla? <laughs> He's like, it's that it's that Ubisoft game. I'm like, 
clearly, because this is the Ubisoft show. Uh, <laughs> He's so descriptive. I know. He's Be so nice cool. to him, okay? We picked him apart yesterday. I too know, much. dude. I'm, <laughs> this pre show snack chat was just. <laughs> man. Uh, I asked him about the chili dog th- or the hot, the Chicago style hot dog thing last night, and you know he's like, "Somebody just want a good hot dog." I'm like, "Okay, I don't." <laughs> then we talked about so- a, a thousand other things because I think side tangent. <laughs> next next weekend, him and I are going to do a lot of <laughs> rewatches and watch alongs. I think mm-hmm. uh, just because he's missing all this because he has to work. Uh, <laughs> so, and anybody's welcome to join us if if you want. But uh, yeah. I watched. I, I saw the Ninja Turtles thing. I'm like, they look good. Like, I I liked the reveal. You know, very 80s 90s cartoon mm-hmm. reveal, which is what I got from that side scroll beat 'em up that's mm-hmm. coming out soon too. Uh, mm-hmm. Why are the turtles getting crossovers with everything right now? By the way, yeah. it's like it's Money. awesome. But I'm like, make make a damn Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, give me a good open <laughs> world. A Metroid style turtles game. So, so I think I think part of it though is that they are tr- trying to get another Ninja Turtles movie funded. Nobody they did. Wants it's to coming. In, it's coming to Netflix. Seth Rogen is producing it and writing it. Wait, for real? Right. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. they're even wanting to do another animated series too. Yeah, because the last one they did was terrible. Uh, so to get that though, they they're trying to build more value into the brand. Yeah, uh, I know Seth Rogen is doing a. Turtles. I don't know, remember if it's a movie or a show that's geared more. Leave it. It's geared more All towards right. people our age who watched it when you were yeah. little, but you know have the adult sensibilities of like, oh, Michelangelo is a stoner. Huh? He's probably gonna smoke weed in this. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> He's making a CG animated uh, reboot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Be coming out next year or coming out in two years on August 11th. Great. Uh, I feel like we're seeing like a, a, a whole slew of um, more, you know, TV show really, you know, crossover from games versus all the really crappy movies we've been getting over the years. So <laughs> hopefully we can see a better transition from games to cinema or however you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think it's because Hollywood doesn't necessarily know how to take on video games. I mm-hmm. mean, the Witcher has been the first real series that's kind of like opened the doors as of late. But then like two mythic quest is the number one show on Apple TV plus out beating like some seriously good shows that, you know, Oscar in my Chamala had some stuff on it. And yet mythic quest beat that. Um, I think people want more of that binge mentality of give me something yeah. that I can watch on a weekly basis. I mean, the MCU has been trying it. It's been working wonders for Disney plus. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a good model to go after and it's an yeah. untapped market. I mean, everybody, I mean, it's a shame that we don't have a Zelda show yet. Oh, my heart. So, okay. Yeah. I, another, another side tangent. Here we go, guys. Uh, Zelda show. <laughs> I have a great idea for a Zelda show. And it does not involve Link at all. I think it should revolve you, around... You talked about this the other day. I what did. did we talk about this? It, it should revolve around the politics and betrayal God. of Princess Zelda and the king and Ganon and his thief army or whatever. It'd be very, like, I guess... Game of thrones Yeah, but I, I haven't watched Game of Thrones, so I don't know, oh. uh, really. <laughs> but He's one of those people. Uh, I am. You know what, Logan? Just because you said it like that, I'm going to tell you that I'm proud to be one of those people. Well, and if anyone read my thing, I've got a good idea for a Mario movie. Uh, it's the politics <laughs> of the Mushroom Kingdom yeah. so, and the betrayal Corey, who of Princess Peach with the king mm, and uh, Bowser's uh, for... army and all of that. Auditor well, 450 with the comment of the night. So Zelda with incest? Oh. <laughs> Hmm. Link could be your brother. You don't know. Um, Who would you want to play Zelda? Like, like, give, uh, give me an actor or an actress. Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I said. I, it's being, on that note, though, Jeff Goldblum as Ganon. Oh, that could be cool. Because, like, like I always first, you honestly, got... Dave, Dave Batista would make a good. Oh Ganon. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I'm just thinking like in terms of the way Nintendo 
is going if they ever did one how they would want it to go it would be you know kind of kid friendly and like if you oh, yeah. add it, like they would add some sort of comedy to it it wouldn't be the show that we would want it to be right it would just but uh jeff goldblum could be like this really weird version of ganon who thinks he's funny and becomes a meme and uh you know that kind of thing did you did you did you uh see my thing Corey, that i had posted about the mario movie uh i did not <laughs> well i well i was just joking i had so i had, you guys were i think it was you guys were talking about um we're talking about movies uh like about a Mar- the mario movie on one of the shows mm-hmm. i think it was boss rush and that i had i had made this whole thing up that like in another universe uh uh Seth Rogen made made a uh, the Mario movie and it was him and he played Mario and then it was Oh uh, yeah, I, I remember you saying this. Yeah. yeah. And that the whole the whole movie was them like tripping on mushrooms and and they had to beat their their uh, alternate their their dark side their evil side of them which you know is Wario and Waluigi. Yeah. And uh <laughs> Yeah, I think that would actually be a kind of like an actual adult like Mario movie would be kind of funny. Yeah, I don't know. It, to to answer your question though, Logan, who would have played Zelda? I don't I know mean, who I would want to play Zelda, but for some reason, I see like Amanda Siegfried playing Zelda for some reason. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking that. I'm, I'm no lie. I was like, who's that person from Mean Girls? Yeah, yeah I was thinking with Kinsey Davis. She would be a really good one too. She was in uh, she was in that awkward moment. I'm looking through IMDb right now. Uh, she was in what was that one uh, this this past fall with uh, Kristen? Uh, oh, Stewart. the 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 lesbian Christmas uh-huh. movie. Yeah, 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 that like, movie was really was... good. <laughs> I, That's yeah, right. I, I that came off <laughs> way <laughs> worse than it was. Should I Google to. that lesbian Christmas movie? I mean, I mean it'll probably, yeah, sure, come, it'll probably would come, come up. Soul. Make sure safe search is on. Uh, Sheep. No, that takes the fun out of it. Oh gosh, uh, she would be really cool because I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple of good options there. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there, you can't really go. There's a lot of good actresses out there that you know they could probably. But Olivia Rodrigo. Who? Mm. Olivia Rodrigo. Who the heck is that? While he's looking that up, you know who else is a ginger that I think would make a good Ganon Ganondorf? Uh, Michael Fassbender? Yeah, oh, that'd be yeah. he would be awesome. What about, what about Michael Rosenbaum? What? As as what? As is like a like a comedy version of Ganon? Yeah, comedy version. Yeah. Mm. All right, so hopefully Nintendo is too. listening to this. Yes, Nintendo and Netflix, you can have that one for free. All we want you to do is say that that, that your show is sponsored by this show. We'll give it to you for free. Yep. I'll send you assets. Yep. Logan can do a thing. I don't know. He he has a good voice for promotion. Uh, I don't know. Better. I mean, there's all, always Willem Dafoe. <laughs> God. <laughs> As Ganondorf. I feel like he would play the king. He's he, but that I mean that's typecasting William Defoe, Willem Dafoe at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyways, Ubisoft pre-show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what oh, that pre-show. You didn't watch it, right, Corey? No, I, I, the only, like I said, the only two things I saw were, were the the Ninja Turtles thing, which I don't know if that was part of the pre-show or just some kind of weird thing beforehand. No, and then that was part of the pre-show. I saw yeah. like three minutes of 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 Avor riding a horse in the snow. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, that, the, you watched the pre-show there. Oh, cool. The, yeah. uh, so the way it was set up is, is baffling to me. You have a whole hour ske- scheduled. And so they'll have like, here's a two minute PR piece of like, Hey, we're Ubisoft. We're doing cool things. And then we're going to show literal five minutes of a character and, and for honor walking Mm -hmm. slowly (laughs) nothing happening you're watching leaves fall uh, maybe someone on a horse ride spot nothing Mm -hmm. then that'll go out and you have a two minute trailer for something you know brawlhalla and now you're going to watch someone riding a drone slowly (laughs) 
nothing happening <laughs> for five whole minutes. And then it's going to cut to like another two minute trailer. And now you're going to watch a plane fly through the air for five minutes. Slow. No exaggeration. Block is describing it perfectly, by the way. Uh, yeah. Nothing happening. You know, and, and what was also really baffling to us was a lot of the content we found out has already been on their YouTube channel for weeks. Yeah. And so they had this accessibility thing, which was pretty cool. It was nice. It was, it was you know, we're trying to make our games more accessible to people. You can, you know, change the font. You can, up, you can um, change, like, the cursors in a game. You can make the map look a little bit different. And we're all for that. It's great. And then they're like, go to our YouTube channel to, to view this video. It's the one thing that they, they're like, we're being accessible. Just go find it somewhere on the internet. We don't give you the link. Go find it on YouTube. They don't say our YouTube. They don't say mm -hmm. any. Just go find it on YouTube. No and keyword. And so we go looking for, you, for it on YouTube. And we're like, okay, there's the For Honor thing. There's the Brawlhalla thing. There's nothing for accessibility. It's there from like three or four weeks ago. <laughs> but it's just, it's so, like, did yeah. they have to do that for a pre-show? Could they have just cut out like 10 minutes of actual content <laughs> and tacked it on to the other hour that they had? <laughs> and then I could have spent the other 50 minutes playing a, a, an actual game. Game, you know, yeah, yeah. That, 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 so that's the pre-show. And uh, Logan said it like it, it was like a pacing issue. I feel, yeah. <laughs> especially in the beginning. Yeah. Mm. Which I mean, historically though, Ubisoft's always kind of struggled with pacing. Yeah. I mean, since they got rid of Ayesha yeah, Tyler, do... their their pacing has been bad. Exactly. The thing the thing is is you when you've got games like Siege and you know there's still people out there playing. A lot of their games and streaming it, I I feel like they could literally like just go and, you know, like find post streamers playing their games, or something like anything like just you know something in between like something that's actually worth, you know, like that's entertaining or you know someone actually doing something mm -hmm. in between I, you know. And I pointed out. When we were watching it, there's a part where one of the drones, a woman riding a drone, and it comes dangerously close to hitting a building, and it <laughs> doesn't. And, and so that tells me that somebody at some point programmed that whole video. Like, it's not just some random video, like, oh, okay. Like, someone sat down and made the route that, that they fly through... <laughs> And then watched it, and they were like, "This is good. I'm getting a paycheck. We're good to do hey, this." And hey, then Tom, posted, you got that? You got that drone shot? Yeah, got we it. We came so close. We're using it. <laughs> using it. We like, came so close to hitting that building. Like it was so <laughs> close. Like that would have been. That would have made my day. It would have made the whole hour worth it. They could have they hit the building and they crashed and all. Of, <laughs> something would have happened. <laughs> that, but, like maybe, but like did. maybe Snowdrop has has the tractability now, and they fly the drone into the building, and it just you know breaks the window or something. That, uh, that would have been a day one purchase for me. I don't <laughs> just saying that. What also hurt though that that's the that's E three gets kicked off. Like E three started, mm. and every year it's like oh E three we're so excited, and so no matter what it is, it's the first thing. So, like, we're all excited. We're hungry for games. We're hungry for something. And then they start out with that. Yeah. Of, like, For Honor and drones just slowly moving. It, it lit out the air of this balloon of mm -hmm. excitement. Yeah. That when the actual show started, I'm still reeling from, like, this boring ass thing that i just watched <laughs> like they could have like they could have put like like they they showed the ninja turtles thing which was cool but then they could have moved like the new season of siege in there for players to watch right like things that already exist 
out there that they're adding stuff to. Like they could have, like the pre-show could have been Ninja Turtles. It could have been the new season of Siege, and it could have been the Assassin's Creed DLC. And then they could have moved into the show, and and yeah. you know, like you could have done the Siege, the Siege new season of Siege, and the new Operator, and then you could have transitioned into the main show into uh, Extraction, right? I think that would have been like a really good tra- transition, except for like, I don't understand why you didn't put the two Rainbow Six things together, like. Mm. As a producer, I feel like that's something you should know is like, hey, you know, we're going to transition from extraction into the new operator or show, you know what I mean? Or like do the operator first and then show the new operator in extraction because they're using the same operators from Siege, right? That's like the Roughly, idea. Yeah. I, but see, like, I don't, I don't blame Ubisoft too much for this one. This is a weird year. Like normally... No the pre-show they would have the different developers talking about those moments so if we're introducing the the ninja turtles into brawlhalla we have 10 minutes about hey this is everything you're going to be able to play with this here's why we are doing this now here's the inspiration behind it and so i mean this year i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna blame ubisoft for it and i also think that they thought i mean and this is, this is kind of how i was too is that you're not going to get a majority of your audience watching the pre-show. A lot of people are going to tune in at 1.55 or whatever it is when your time zone, and they're going to watch the main show at 2 Mm o'clock. Yeah, I mean, I I actually thought this was one of their better shows in recent years. Uh, Yeah. uh, You know, outside of the pre-show, like, I thought the pacing was okay, except for I felt like the extraction stuff was a little long, but I understand it's, like, really the only new game that they're showing besides Mario Rabbids, well, right? It's, so. it, it's, it's one of their biggest money makers as well. And yeah. with eSports continuing to grow, you need to be able to showcase that stuff so mm-hmm. that uh, tournaments can plan for later in the year. Yeah. Uh, so all right. So one this... thing I... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, if I could say one more thing about the pre-show. And unfortunately, it was probably like halfway through it, right, Block? Or at some point much later. <laughs> so it took a while. I, I did like how they did... Um, present three indie titles i don't Mm -hmm. think i'll play them but i you know i'm i'm you know big on indie games and the first one i didn't even know how to pronounce it's called dorf romantic is that Um, how you say that yeah i I think so i don't i (laughs) yeah i mean that is i don't dorf romantic um it's like kind of like a build your own environment but it's meant to be like a puzzle as well so they claim it's relaxing i would probably get stressed out because i'm very competitive but it looks cool. I might not buy it, but it looks cool. Another one was um, Bravery Network Online. That's a turn-based battle strategy game. Then the last one, I'm not sure if I'll end up actually buying it, but I think it was hilarious. It's called You Suck at Parking. Yeah, that looks hilarious. I, I really wish someone from Boston, from where I am, with a thick Boston accent to talk about this game. Oh, this is so funny. You drive around, you park your car, you suck at parking. But, um, yeah. It reminded me of this. I've not played it, but I've had it from PlayStation Plus for years. This game, Roundabout. You seen that? Uh-uh. It's um, like a car that's just spinning around repeatedly, and you're trying to navigate the streets. It's what it reminded me of. But... Oh, okay. yeah. It... And, and by the way, I think Dwarf Romantic... Unless they showed a, a new one, I think that's already right. that game. I thought I, I thought that game came out like last year already. It was they, they years had ago. A, yeah, partial release, and then they're planning on oh, a full okay. release with adding okay. Switch and adding mobile. Oh, okay, yeah, because I yeah, because I had I was like, God, I've heard about that a long time ago, but yeah, that okay, yeah, that makes sense because yeah, now that you mentioned, I think yeah, it was like one of those early access type yeah. kind of. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's always good to see these these bigger companies kind of push some indies. You know, it's uh, <laughs> sometimes you get so overwhelmed by these big, huge AAA games, right? That you, yeah. these companies kind of forget about the little guys. EA's been pretty good about doing this too. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, say what you want about EA and their FIFA card packs and their, you know, Star Wars garbage, but uh, they do pretty good with the. Uh, indie side of things so yeah well speaking of uh kicking things off 54 minutes into the show uh ubisoft opened with rainbow six extraction uh which is previously rainbow six quarantine they changed the name because of 
I think pretty obvious reasons. Uh, an alien force has uh, infected parts of the United States, and they're sending in these the operatives to go in and cl- and clear out the uh, infection, and you know save some of the other operators and stuff. So, Jesse, I'm going to kick it over to you because I know that you're pretty excited for this. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I I liked what I seen. I like I like kind kind of how they really change up the gameplay, you know, like cuz at first I was worried that it was just going to be like a, you know, like similar to the uh to the the demo type, I guess limited time thing that they they had come out it's confirmed you know, that this is a ago. sequel to that yeah so that's which that's cool i think yeah yeah i mean you know like i got from it what i was hoping i was hoping that it was gonna just be more than you know just basically the game you know running in a different different way but nothing really added to it Mm -hmm. and i liked i liked that you kind of you know they're adding new equipment and new you know new things and that you kind of work towards unlocking Mm -hmm. um and and upgrading and stuff like that i i really liked that kind of stuff that they that they were showing off and honestly like just like the 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 bad guys or the aliens or whatever you know you want to call them like i thought i thought it looked really cool too it Mm -hmm. looked good and you know like i'm i'm really super excited for back for blood but yeah but the you know like the i i think i might actually try to try this game out and it might be that thing that gets me back into siege Mm -hmm. you know like playing that kind of stuff in that world because like it's hard playing that by myself. I don't always, you know, like playing the regular siege, um, and I don't really, you know, there's no one else that really plays it anymore that I, you know, that I play with or whatever. But I do go back into it, and I think this would be something that would be a little bit more fun, uh, you know, to play. And and who knows, you know, like maybe some of you know we if someone else ends up getting getting it or whatever, we could always do do like a boss rush thing type thing and play some but yeah yeah i, I i'm excited it, it looked pretty good to me and like you know like i said i was just i was excited to see that it, it's a little bit more than just feeling like like you know a game tooled in a different way you know it, it's it felt like it was an actual like new different kind of game yeah you know this looks like something i could get into with with you like the siege is Mm -hmm. like this really obviously i'm not the uh (laughs) hardcore multiplayer guy you know i mean Mm -hmm. i i when i when i talk about destiny i never talk about the pvp stuff it's always like the the raids Mm -hmm. and the strikes or like the events and stuff Mm -hmm. and it's uh this seems like that side of rainbow six that i would like to play so Mm -hmm. i will actually probably try it and pick it up and play it so. yeah more more objective based yeah it reminded me a lot of resistance because of the mm-hmm. the alien infection and mm-hmm. the the sci-fi uh weaponry and stuff but the one thing that i, I couldn't help but think it's like is is this what tom clancy wanted all along mm-hmm. when he <laughs> when he made rainbow six he said ah we're gonna have, they're gonna fight aliens mm-hmm. here. We got we got to build up to it, but they're gonna fight aliens. I mean, you could have said that when they uh, released Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where they're like, "Oh, you're a guy who's fighting, you know, Facebook and technology on a remote island in the middle of nowhere uh, against the Punisher." So whatever. Well, there, and then there's gonna be the sequel game to hunt for red october where it's on like venus yeah right <laughs> yeah hey, that, that's that's a joke it's that, that game's not coming out <laughs> i mean it did look like it had some cool elements from prey in there too i yeah. mean i guess with how the alien there. yeah it looked look cool i'm definitely in yeah the way the way the infection spread across the four especially mm-hmm. had some real yeah. big prey vibes to it yeah yeah those dark visuals like oh that like the alien like dark visuals kind of really I thought works well with that with that world and stuff because 
like I mean, for the most part, like you know, re- regular siege is just pretty like standard. Like I don't you know, know, some like, of those uh, operators have some real GI Joe feel to them. Yeah, especially the later season ones. Yeah, which is fine. Like I mean, you know, like it, it is kind of cool, but a lot of the a lot of the ones that people just are like, okay, this is kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. People just uh, <laughs> just vote out anyways that you're not able to use them yeah. <laughs> in that round. Which is fine, you know. Like I, I am all for a, uh, um, you know, player-based decision of what what oper- operators don't get used or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything to say about Rainbow Six before we move on? Seems cool. It's out in what September, I think. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. All right. So after that, they showed off that Rocksmith Plus subscription. Uh, I actually thought they were going to love this. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I thought they were going to be done with Rocksmith just because, like, obviously the Guitar Hero phase is over, and Rocksmith was trying to do something different in that space a long time ago. And I knew they were still releasing kind of weird DLC and stuff for certain versions of the game. But this is cool. This is this is really unique and different. And I applaud Ubisoft for sticking with it and actually providing something that's, you know useful and educational and will probably do a lot better in this sort of environment than I think they planned with the original games, especially because like you can use your own instruments and all you have to do Mm -hmm. is plug it into your cell phone or a USB port on a console or whatever. And I I think it's really neat. Imagine if they do what they, what they've done with just dance um, and do that with rock, with rocksmith plus and, and not, not putting it into nursing homes or something <laughs> but i mean maybe but you know to putting it in schools putting it into you know mm-hmm. uh instrument stores or something it, it, you, marketing it to the right people mm-hmm. um because i don't think that just marketing it to gamers um is all that they need to do i don't think that would work you would have to market because it's it certainly is it's a device that appeals to many people outside of gaming and it really straddles that line of of it's not really a video game you know it's 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 interactive entertainment mm-hmm. yeah. than, than any We're kind teaching. of gaming yeah i yeah. mean i mean the timing of this Corey, i i agree with you where you know you said you didn't think that this was going to keep going and I don't think it was until COVID hit because once COVID hit, a lot of these mom and pop music shops went out of mm-hmm. business. Right. And a lot of the places where you would go to send your kid to learn guitar lessons just don't exist. Mm-hmm. Fender uh, had created a Fender Play uh, demo, which is really, really cool. And it, I, I've been using it to, to, to relearn guitar. But like this is, I think, a little bit more interactive. And I think this is a great tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you can do bass and guitar and again you're using your phone as the mic so many more apps are doing that and it's a genius technology i mean guitar band you can use your phone now as an amplifier and have all your effects and all this cool stuff i mean this is a hundred percent a win for ubisoft Mm -hmm. it just needs to be priced correctly yeah that's the thing is 12.99 or less if it's there awesome Mm mm-hmm yeah, I was going to say, I this subscription can't be any more than, like, 15 bucks a month, right? Like, I, I feel like that's high, but I feel like, you know, especially with all the stuff you can do in it, like, I mean, not only can you learn how to play, but veterans can, like, remix certain songs and add certain, you know, cor- you know they can they can do really interesting things with existing songs, and I think that's really cool, too. Well, and you can get active feedback, too. Mm-hmm. That's my one issue with Fender Play is that I don't know if I'm hitting the string exactly the way I should be. So if I need to make a correction early on in the process to stop a bad habit from becoming a major problem, mm-hmm. like that alone is sets Rocksmith up above anything else that's on the market right now. Right. And it's, and you can use a cue stick. You don't have yeah. to use an electric guitar and plug it in and... Mm-hmm. And have all of that, you can just pick up what you have and and go for it. It is going to be interesting to me to see how they incorporate bass, because bass is a really tricky one to do based off an iPhone or Android mic. I mean, the mics are great, that's awesome, but Mm -hmm. bass has such a low frequency of volume that it's like, unless you're plugged into an amp, it's going to be tough. Yeah, but I I feel like... I feel like people who are veterans and really, really get into the nitty gritty after, you know, the first couple of weeks. I mean, it's like 
I'm going to use podcasting as an example, right? The first time I podcast, I, I talked into like my webcam mic and, you know, whatever. And then you just keep getting new equipment, better equipment. You change the way you do certain things. And like maybe when people really get into this, they invest in different equipment or different setups or different, uh, you know, things to, to plug your stuff into and, and listen. And maybe that's the route they're aiming for. Because I mean, I mean, personally, I don't think that's the way that it's marketed. Because I mean, I think that this no, is no, 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 no. You want to make it. You want to make it market. You want to market it to right. be like this is the easiest possible way to learn yeah. guitar if you have one already, right? But like, this, this is the your parents don't have to buy you anything additional. Go for it. Here's the mm-hmm. app. Pay yeah. for the subscription and go. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so Rocksmith Plus coming. Huge plus. When they say this was coming. So you have a private beta starting like next week, and then hopefully full release either late August, early September. Yeah, cool. Uh, all right. Well, that was a longer conversation. I thought we were going to have on rocks. Uh, the next it's a thing, cool idea, though. It is. <laughs> it's it's a really cool idea. So we can just cut the Mario Rabbits discussion then. It's cool. Mm. Mm. No, because I want to talk about Riders Republic. <laughs> Uh, oh heck yes! Riders <laughs> Republic. It looks like a game that I didn't know I wanted, and now that I watch this trailer, I'm just like, man, if I if I can just sit on my couch and fly down a mountain, or you know, crash into trees, or I don't know. It looks like it looks like <laughs> it looks like that Far Cry game that came out, but instead of guns, they gave everybody <laughs> snowmobiles and gang gliders. <laughs> yeah, see, this this is the game I was talking about before we started. Mm-hmm. Uh, the before we started the podcast that I had seen that I was half paying attention to, but yeah, this this game looks so awesome. Yeah, it's like because like I love uh, the um, oh crap, what are they called now? The the side scrolling uh, games. Uh, what Ollie Ollie? Where, no, the the one with the motorcycles and stuff where you're you're. Uh, you're right. It's like side scrolling or whatever, and you've got the tracks that you're going through, and you got to try to stay upright. Like Excite bike? No, 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 no. I'm no. lost now. Uh, I yeah, just move on. I can't think of it right now. But uh, yeah, this this game looks really cool. I I I knew that they had some interesting. I knew they had something interesting with steep. Right, the steep mm-hmm. looked really interesting, mechanically good, but there wasn't like anything that made you be like man i want to do this right and i think adding this weird kind of extra thing to it it's uh i think it's cool i think riders republic is the evolution of ssx that i think maybe i want right because we were talking about that a little bit earlier where yeah. i've been wanting an ssx game for a long time and this might be a step in that direction so uh pat says yeah, trials, trials. Right? was it trials yeah, yeah. trials yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like I was that trying game. to think so hard on what that was. Yeah, it, it's like trials, but like done in like the you yeah. know in the three D versus a side like a more of a side scrolling, which yeah. I'm all in. I love the trials games. Like I I got so addicted to those games where I would just play them for hours. Yeah. It so was really fun. I'm not into extreme sports, but that's a game that I would mm-hmm. play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you saying, Logan? Uh, so, okay, I tested Steep back in 2014. I've been kind of quietly doing Writers Republic 2. They brought most of us back for a closed beta a few weeks, uh, about six weeks ago. This game is insane. This game is absolutely awesome. Um, I love that they took a lot of the feedback that we had back when Steep came out and changed it up for Writers Republic. Instead of having like these realistic characters, you get a little bit more of a cartoonish style with an unbelievably breathtaking landscape. I mean, I was thoroughly impressed with how this world looks. And then they created a lot more features and ramps and grinds that are developer made and not just part of the natural landscape. And I think that's a huge thing because like one of my biggest critiques of Steep is that there's not a set path you have to go on. And if you just venture on your own, there's a lot of chance there's a lot of big hills where you'll just die and there's like well hey a little bit more guidance there of hey this is kind of the direction you need to go if you want to pull off these awesome tricks this game is going to be absolutely awesome i can't wait to to to, to, to play the full game and see how uh trick attack looked awesome that new game mode i can't wait to dive into that 
Yeah, I can't. I just can't wait to be the Sherpa or whatever that is riding that bike on the mountain. There's so <laughs> many customizations. Like, there's a panda suit you can wear. There's uh, like I want this the little ice is... cream. Uh, yeah, bicycle. It's... <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, there's one with a poop emoji so that you can ride down. That's, oh, mm, there you go. Mm. <laughs> my daughter got me. My daughter got me a poop emoji pillow sitting on my chair over there. She thinks it's hilarious. That's, that's how she. That's, that's how you show true love, right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gave my son that poop emoji plushie, and he still has it around. Mm. I mean, it's awesome. it's a fan favorite. It's yeah, it's gonna be sticking. Around I won there. a poop emoji hat at a carnival, and I gave it to my nephew. So <laughs> one of the other takeaways I had here was: Did you guys see that little part where they uh, they didn't go in depth about it, but it looked cool? Where you can race? It looked like about 30, 40 people at the same yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, dude, I'm so in for that. Is this that like a awesome. is this like a extreme sports version of a battle royale where like you have to maybe this is where like Ro- like road rash or whatever comes in and you're like hitting people with chains on snowmobiles and stuff i'm in i'm yeah, in I love the road rash god road uh, rash 99 ch- has to happen at some point remember that yeah, terrible remember that terrible version that came out like uh, it was called like road redemption or something a couple years ago yeah, and it was like sense. supposed to be a road rash game and it was really bad it sucks it's yeah. so bad i got it it's so bad yeah Oh, man. Good times. Uh, Riders Republic, that comes out. When does that come out, Logan? September 2nd. If only we had an awesome writing team that probably posted the release date at some point somewhere. On I here. think I did write an article about you it. You yeah. did. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to find <laughs> it. Uh, by the way, anything we talk about here tonight, you'll be able to watch the breakouts uh, in the articles that our writing team uh, did an awesome job covering uh, the, the shows today. Uh, so you know what else? You know what else? Uh, the Everybody game except Jesse. Good my... job today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else that kind of reminds me of too is like is like Wreckfest. Like the mm-hmm. you know like it just it takes like that kind of that fun like just like craziness of like that game, but yet it's it's still like you know it feels realistic and looks nice. And but yet at the same time it's just yeah like you said going for that goofy like comical almost style mm-hmm. like yeah because like Wreckfest I I love that game so much yeah <laughs> it's uh, so fun Jesse I don't know do you want to talk about the new operator for Siege or do you do do we just want to move on to uh, uh we, yeah we can move on I like because I kind of seen it but it's like. I I kind of was like not I was only half paying attention to that. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, like because I'm I'm excited, but I usually end up. I'll be honest. I, I learn about the new, the new operators when I when I fire the game up and read, yeah. read or watch the video things that they usually have when the new operators come out or when they are coming out. Yeah. A lot of the times they they do a really good job of kind of uh, teasing uh, new stuff and all that. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, so after that, I kind of got, I, I kind of, kind of stopped paying attention in the middle of this. I know that Assassin's Creed is getting uh, the this new DLC, DLC. Uh, which mm-hmm. that's what that Nate game needs is more game, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, not not enough uh, game in that 120 hour <laughs> action RPG. Uh, so that that's coming. Uh, which this this is coming from somebody who bought all the DLC for Odyssey and played about ninety hours of it. So, whoops. I, I was gonna say, how many hours have you stuck into Destiny Two, buddy? I mean, there, 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 uh, there's people probably who are close creators. to twenty five hundred hours since it launched. So, shut up, Logan. Okay. How many how many hours have you sunk into High School Musical, Logan? <laughs> I, mean, I have no regrets. No regrets. Uh, the crew two is getting an expansion, which is called what was it called, Jesse? You brought it up earlier. The the ridge or something? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the ridge. I, yeah, I think it was called. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah. So we we got a lot of montage announcements. We we t- they talked about the uh, Ubisoft movie and TV stuff that's coming. Uh, the Werewolf Within movie that they're doing looks funny enough. Uh, Mythic Quest season two is coming. 
Uh, it's already it's already going. It's it's almost yeah. finished. Uh, uh, so there there's that Splinter Cell. Yeah, uh, Splinter Cell, dude. By the way, it, when they did the when they did the twenty twentieth anniversary of Ghost Recon thing, and they just showed like an uh, like a two second image of of Sam Fisher. Anybody else kind of die inside a little bit? Just kind of <laughs> like. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's just kind of like, man, Splinter Cell. Just give us an actual game. They're not, yeah, I feel, I feel like they're not going to. It makes yeah, me sad. Yeah, they're just going to keep on putting it. He'll, he'll also probably be in Mario Rabbids, uh, <laughs> to the second one again. Yeah. He was in the first one. Yeah. Or, well, his goggles and stuff. Yeah. His goggles would be cool. Yeah. What if somebody turns into Sam Fisher? Which... A rabid Sam Fisher. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're going to skip Just Dance. We talked about Just Dance. I don't think anybody really, unless somebody's really into Just Dance, we can we can talk about it. We can t- we can talk about it. Anybody want to talk about that anymore? Because no, we we talked enough about yeah, it. Yeah, we we talked enough about it. The game I basically told people not to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch it on YouTube. Uh, buy it and dance your hearts out, okay? Don't listen yeah. to these other people, okay? Yeah. We're hearts. gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip this Far Cry six DLC for a second here. We're gonna talk about Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope coming to Nintendo Switch yes. next year. Oh my gosh. I've Ooh. never been so excited in my life. Legit, my favorite uh, Mario game. <laughs> it was the first Mario Rabbids. <laughs> it's dude. Oh, oh, it looks so I good. I love that game. And oh. I'm sure it's not really related, but it, it kind of made me thought of all the crazy deals that the first Mario plus Rabbids game has been seeing on when I whenever I go onto the Nintendo eShop. I'm like, what's happening? It's on sale yeah. all the time. All yeah. It's on if you so, want the physical copy right now, it's on sale on Amazon for fourteen dollars right now. Wow. If you and don't interested. the physical copies come with the the uh I the think, DLC? I think they come I think they repackaged it with the DLC last year for the gold edition. Mm-hmm. I don't know if mm-hmm. it's the same version. Oh, okay. But I know they did repackage it with the DLC last the year Donkey for Kong. the whatever the normal price is. Uh Stephanie, how excited are you for this game? Oh, wicked excited. I can't wait. I love how, you know, they, they kind of take it towards like a, you know, a, like a space type setting and there's a rabid Rosalina. So I I mean, just, oh my gosh, so, she's so sassy. Uh, yes. They're yeah, getting ready to go. To get up. They're getting out. They're getting ready to go and they just look back and she's just sitting there in the chair like kind of, uh, she's like the, the emo rabid where she's like, uh, Yes, and then she good. just slowly slopes out of it, fall, slides out <laughs> so, of the chair. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, something know, interesting. Uh, when I'm, I was writing the article for it, and I was, I was trying to do a little bit more research as, to get as much info as I could, and I noticed that in the official image of uh, what looks to be the, the box art later, mm-hmm. it has like our red-eyed villains on one side. And then you have Mario and Rabbit Peach and um, and Rabbit Luigi, and then you have that 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 emo punk rock guy mm-hmm. who has like a Buster Sword from Final Fantasy right there. But they also have Bowser mm-hmm. right there, which makes me wonder if again Bowser and Mario will team up, and you'll have a, a another. Mm-hmm. Like rabid Bowser or something that, that will join your party as well. I wonder if Bowser, like, maybe to unlock him you have to beat him, right? Maybe no. he's like the mm-hmm. first boss, and then like you unlock him as a character moving forward. I, cool. I would, I would, I would think that that's a big possibility. Yeah. Um, and then like the rabid uh, 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 Luna Star. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Luma. Too. yeah. I, I love Mario Galaxy, so I love how they have so so much of those vibes. And I, I did try to do a bit more digging. Um, you know, so much excitement, and I there's hints to it being a little more. I wouldn't say fully open world like, but mm-hmm. I guess being able to travel to different planets in each planet, you know, 
kind of like the Galaxy, I guess, right? It's yeah. this seems a lot bigger than the first game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if that's why it took what it'll be four and a half years About since four the first years, game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to come out because it's a lot bigger because the first game they said was only in development for two and a half years. So yeah. the fact that it's taken them almost twice as long, um, especially because they didn't really have to develop an engine, right? Like they, they have the engine, they have the presumably most of the assets, especially for the, the main characters. Right. So, uh, yeah, man, I, this game looks so good. It looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think what they, what they could do, like, I w- what I would like to see from this mm-hmm. is like I had there's I had nothing against what they did in the first one, um, but I almost would have preferred that instead of having the extra levels and extra things that you could do after the fact, that they would have just had more to the actual story, and and you know just kind of left that like whole like doing things differently and going back and like having the different you know puzzles that you would play at certain difficulties or whatever Mm -hmm. like i almost would would more would rather have more game more you know focused on the actual story Mm -hmm. because like you know as i was i think like everyone was when that first one got announced everyone was worried you know, like because we've seen the worst of the the rabbit stuff, where they <laughs> can be very annoying and no, be very... no, they can't. They're awesome. The rabbits are cool. I'm gonna stand by that statement forever. I like when they just like when Rayman Raving Rabbits came out, or like the yeah. the weird Wii games came out. Yeah, and they would just like I'm talking more the shows and stuff. Yeah, like but they the would just show. be they would just be like walking by the camera doing normal things, and then they just stop and stare at the camera, and then just be like. <laughs> yeah. How does that go? Well, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, you know, like they did such a good job of like n- nailing the humor and stuff in the first one, yeah. and like obviously in this trailer that we've seen, I think they did a good job in that. So like I, you know, like I'm not worried about any of that stuff anymore. You know, like after the first one, they. They prove that they really can and make something fun that's for you know all ages mm-hmm. um, would enjoy. But like I, yeah, I, there's so much that I've never went back to in the first one where where it was kind of optional, mm-hmm. and I kind of would rather they just like keep it all part of a story. It's, you know, make me want to go back to play these you know puzzles. Yeah. Um, that's the only, the, honestly, the only thing that I, I could think of. The, otherwise, I'm, I'm all in. I mean, I've been waiting for this for years now for a new one. So, yeah. the second I, I finished the first one, I was ready for another one. I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I'm glad that um, the leak from this morning didn't really ruin the excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it made people more excited. To be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, it, it's this. This is this game was special when it came out, especially because like I think a lot of people remember uh, seeing the developer, uh, you know, in, in you know, not like crying, crying, but he, you know, tears of joy when his game was being announced on stage with Miyamoto. Like, how many developers get to say that besides people that work at Nintendo directly with him, yeah. right? Like, how many yeah. people get to say Miyamoto announced my game? you know, and, and showed it off and showed off the cool weapons that we're using. And, you know, I, I think that that was a heartstring tugging moment for a lot of people and really wanted people to, I, I think it made people want to like this game before it came out. And then when it came out and actually delivered on an experience that people enjoyed, uh, you know, I, I think, yeah, Jesse, you're right. As soon as, as soon as you're done with that first one, you want that second one. And then that Donkey Kong DLC was pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, a little disappointed we didn't get, to, didn't see any Donkey Kong in here, but I bet, yeah, we get, I bet, maybe. I wonder if we get a little bit more at the direct on Tuesday. Yeah. I expect we will. Yeah. 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 It's just another like tiny bit. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, yeah, I, well, I mean, honestly, like, you know, Mario and, you know, like, I I think you feel this way too, Corey. Like, 
the Rayman games are like some of the best like platforming. Oh yeah, you know, Rayman Legends like, is phenomenal. Yeah, oh, those games that. are such amazing platforming games, and especially and the to, music levels like, where be, you have to like jump to the yeah. beat and stuff. Oh, so good. Yeah. Don't play those games without play- headphones. Those levels, by the way, <laughs> yeah. Because like I, I was playing one of the the music levels without the sound on. It's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, rough. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but just like I can, I can imagine, you know, being. I'm sure there was a lot of inspiration from Mario when going into making, you know, that and mm-hmm. and being part of that project, and then. Now to actually be able to work, you know, side by side with the people who, you know, made the the games that inspired them, mm-hmm. it would be awesome. Yeah, like it's, yeah. No, we just need a Rayman uh, Mario crossover. Like, yeah, I've kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that we haven't gotten a third Rayman game, especially after the success of Rabbids, right, and the success yeah. of Legends on Switch and. I mean, I know it came out on Xbox One and PS4 and Wii U, but like, it sold relatively well on Switch as well. And between that and Rabbids, like, I'm kind of surprised they haven't revisited that. Although, I mean, it's not one of their giant money makers, but yeah, I don't know. That would be like if you added Mario to that game and like had some kind of weird universe crossover between them. I feel like that would sell better than most people think. So. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have anything else to say about Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle? Uh, Nintendo's uh, website says it's coming early next year, so I'm I wonder because Pokemon's coming out in January. This feels like it's gonna hit that March slot where like Animal Crossing yeah. usually sits or sat last year, and and uh, I I just kind of feel like that's the sweet spot for that because. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pokemon will be their big game for January. February, they usually put out some kind of port, which I'm really hoping is the rumored Zelda ports that they're talking about. Uh, and then March usually is another new kind of IP, so or new game in a franchise. So I, I'm betting March. I bet we're looking at March. For March that. or April, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, we'll talk a little bit about this Far Cry 6 DLC season pass, uh, focusing on the villains of the franchise. Uh, so you have Voss, you have the uh, character, the the what's his name from 4, uh, you have Joseph from 5, right, uh, in the DLC. Uh, mm-hmm. each focusing Was it on... just those? Uh, yeah. I know that there, like, two had, what, the jackal? Boss, it's Pagan Min. Yeah, Pagan Min was the villain from 4. And then Joseph from... Joseph, yep. Yeah, it it looks kind of like some kind of weird, trippy mind game version of the the game, right? Where, like, you go in and, like, things can change on the fly. Uh, I don't know. It looks weird. It it looks really weird to me. Yeah. See, I... And I love, I'm all in, because I, I loved that that just weird mind stuff in, in 5. Like, I just loved the weird, like... Is that how, what it's like, based would, off of? Is, is there, it, does that stuff exist in 5? Is that what exists well, in, in 5? Well, in 5, there was, like, there was a certain area where if you went too close, you would just, all of a sudden, you'd see your character's eyes slowly shut, and then you'd wake up and... um and be knocked out somewhere like if you tried to get too close to the the main base too early like you would just pass out and be in and uh so they would take you out and then like throw you somewhere and then you to leave you wake up or something like that but there was points where uh once you got so far into the story um you would like wake up and and then you'd just be in this thing where you had to try to like shoot a whole bunch of guys and make your way out like uh, out of this like area shoot your way out and get out but you just like would wake up like because they would shoot darts at you that would knock you out yeah. and and yeah there i mean there was and then there was a lot of mind game stuff with the uh the one girl i can't remember what her name was but the the drug stuff that you see them you know like uh producing or harvesting throughout the game the um 
would kind of make you start like hallucinating and you'd have all these weird hallucination type stuff and yeah and yeah there was like what they've shown though in this in the the stuff for far cry 6 though it's like taking that yeah to a little like the next level a little bit so Hmm. but there are some yeah some feels of that of five in it cool uh i think i think it's interesting when you take a game and you focus on the villains right like you actually get to play the villain uh yeah I mean, I know there's games where you can be like the good guy or the bad guy, right? Like Mass Effect or Jade Empire or something like that. But you like when they actually put you in the in the uh, shoes of the villain. I think that's a really interesting take on on games, and uh, there's a not a lot of people do that. You know, I, I think mm-hmm. maybe even in this day and age where maybe like bad bad people are like extra bad. You know what I mean? Like like mm-hmm. just the way that society views people in in stuff. So. Uh, for them to do this is kind of a, a really, I don't want to say it's a bold move, but it's a, it's a move in that direction in a weird way. And, and I, I kind of applaud them for that. It's, I think it's neat. I think it's cool. Well, it's like, you know, like even something like psyops, like I, you know, like <laughs> I, well, I, well, sorry, honestly, I wasn't, like, I wasn't it, laughing because you brought it up. It's no, just like, that's a game I no, haven't heard about in a long time. Yeah. But I, but I mean, like, honestly though, like, you know, like there are times where I just sit and think like, you know, people in, in real, the real world, like when it comes to wars and, and things like that, like, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got, if you think about it, like they're trying to do what they need to do to protect their country mm-hmm. and we're trying to do what we're trying to do. Like yeah. in sometimes things can get blurred, you know, somewhere in between there and you think about it and put it in your own situation. Like they're just doing what we would do if we felt like we were in danger. Right. Like, you know, like, so like when, when games kind of go around, things like that where or just like where the people you think are the good people end up being the bad guy or you know like uh braid (laughs) like i still to this day braid is one of the all-time best games ever just like oh yeah thinking you're the good guy the whole entire time you're mario saving trying to save the princess no, actually, you're a stalker, and she is trying to get the hell away from you. <laughs> like, I just love that. When it's I like, heard that, I thought oh, that was, like, the funniest thing. I, I, I Like, man, that's... It's so amazing. And then you look at the character, and you're like, he looks like one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so. Yeah, like, when games do, just do, like, think outside of the norm. Like, I, I definitely love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's um, taking it, you know, a, a, another step in, in a narrative. That what makes a villain a great villain is, you know, providing a depth to it. They're not just mm-hmm. yes. evil for evil's sake. Yeah. Although mm-hmm. it has yeah. its place, I gotta say. But yeah, yeah. You know, if, you can, you know. if you can sympathize with a villain at some, at, like on some level, yeah. I feel like, like you can see where the you can sympathize with how, like how he feels or why he's doing what he's doing. You know. That's the whole entire like two thousand episodes of Naruto. <laughs> like, here's a villain. Th- Three hundred episodes later, this is why you feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You know, maybe it's something I'll have to unpack with my therapist. But I always thought video games was a great platform where, because I have to, you know, always be on my best behavior in real life, and I'm always trying to do the right thing. Mm. But mm. video games gives me a way to be like, you know what? I just want to be a like an evil person for like two hours. That's... I want to punch that reporter in Mass Effect every time she yeah. comes up to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, man, good times. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes being bad feels good, guys. It's mm. Life lesson. <laughs> uh, uh, man. All right, so. Anybody have anything else to say about this Far Cry DLC before we hit this? Probably the, I would argue, one of the biggest reveals of the show. Uh, I think I think uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was finally revealed. We knew they've been working on this game for 
God, since the Division One was announced, I feel like oh. you know they they've been working on this. Uh, Massive is the developer, uh, the developer of the first two Division games, and uh, this look, I did not care about that first movie at all. Like I, I was like, man, I'm so bored. This is like Fern Gully in the Last Rainforest on the on the <laughs> in the Max, right? Like throwback. Yeah, uh, man, Robin <laughs> Williams is the bat. R.I.P. <laughs> Is good. That was a man. Talk about a classic a movie. movie. Classic. Uh, but this game looked absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I went to Disney World last year uh, before the pandemic started, and the Animal Kingdom there has the whole uh, Pandora that you can kind of walk through and walk through military camps, and then you can actually kind of walk up through the Blue Cat people's villas or whatever and ride the the big flying dragon bird things and I don't ride Using those technical terms. I am <laughs> I'm loving it. Look, yeah. James Cameron they I, had that. T- gave, he actually emailed me. We're friends. Jimmy. I call him, I call him Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy blue, uh, sent me his, his script, his script writing. And this is what it says. The blue cat people fly the, the <laughs> dragon cat things that, you know, they control with this weird tail <laughs> that comes out of their butts, and uh, also I think they do weird things with these these animals. But we're not going to get into it in this first movie that is explored in the third movie. So <laughs> check that out. Uh, but man, this trailer really made the game this this world appealing and looked cool, right? Like mm-hmm. I, Avatar is like one of those movies that's like this is a cool concept, but I don't need it in a movie and especially a four hour one and especially like a seven movie series. Right. Like, but the world mm-hmm. is cool. looks beautiful. The colors really pop. They really, it really felt like the movie. Right. And in a mm-hmm. lot of ways, you know, since we're so far removed from the movie, it actually looked probably better than the movie. And I know this was like a CG trailer or whatever, but this game looks cool. I want to play this game. It's certainly had, the, you could tell that there was a lot of labor of love mm-hmm. from the developers, that it wasn't you know, just a movie-licensed game. It wasn't just like, oh, James Cameron wants us to do a, a game for the, to coincide with the release of, of the sequels. You know, this looked like the developers wanted to explore this world. They wanted to expand on this universe, and they were given the freedom to to do that mm-hmm. um it'll still probably release um around the time of, of the second movie mm-hmm. probably but you know I, I, it to me it looked like it could stand on its own we don't need anything else and i, I mm-hmm. would be just as happy and i'm like you i didn't you know i, I watched the movie and then it was like okay now it moved on mm-hmm. You know, it it never it never captured me like some other fantasy world, you know, like Lord of the Rings or mm-hmm. Star Wars or anything else like that. But yeah, I'm yeah. Glad for, the only one. For, oh, I see. For me, like I I actually did really like the, you know like this world. You know, it just for whatever reason it did it for me. But I'm much more of like the I think it was sci-fi enough for me that I. Huh. You know, like, because when it comes to, like, Lord of the Rings, I've watched all those, but, like, I've just never really gotten into that that kind of world. I'm not really into the fantasy as much yeah. as the sci-fi. So, like, this did it for me. And then, like, you know, like you, Corey, like, I had gone gone to Animal Kingdom a little while before you had went after they had changed all that. And, like, I was telling you, like, dude, the, like, the Animal Kingdom, like, the whole... The Avatar stuff was so amazing. Do like, the, ba- the 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 at night? What is it? Flight of the Flight of the Banshees or something? I think is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, that you ride. Get to fly on the back dude, that ride them. was yeah, so that crazy. Was insane. Oh my gosh! It was insane. Dude, the way they like hooked you in and like that, yeah. like even like the the thing you sat on, like when you looked down at it, it like looked like the mm-hmm. the thing, and like the, like when they were like flapping their wings, like it yeah. felt like your legs were being crushed by the wings because like they were flapping and like dude yeah. it was so crazy that ride was so crazy yeah it was good it it was yeah it was like and like man talk about like 
heart pounding like the those drops like i mean even though you're like technically just sitting on something yeah. when it's vr like that it's just and it and like you've got all the movement and and the wind and things blowing on you while you in to make it feel like you're really doing it it was it was intense know, Wait, it, was so it was so intense i know stephanie what were you gonna say at you, you were starting to say something oh, earlier. No. Oh, no worries. I was just going to say, I'm glad I'm not the only one, because it's not like I didn't like it. I did enjoy Avatar, but I just didn't get what the major hype. And it's one of the highest grossing movies, it, right? Isn't it in the it's, billions or it, something? It's, it is the yeah. highest grossing movie yeah. of all time. Yeah. yeah so that, that's what I was going to say. But yeah, again, and not saying anything that's different, you know, mm-hmm. I, I am kind of, it. this game has piqued my interest. I think it'll stand on its own. It definitely has the trappings of what would make an open world game. And mm-hmm. I, I just yeah. don't see how it can't be. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I mean, judging by what they did with the division, right? This feels like it's probably going to be some sort of weird loot thing where you go and upgrade, upgrade your weapons. You, you know, I, I wonder if this is going to have some kind of weird faction thing. Where like you could play as like the military guys, or you can play as the blue cat people. That's uh, what I was getting from that too. I know it's not, but I was getting a lot of like mm-hmm. possible World of Warcraft type yeah. of faction type yeah. of, of split. You know, so you could play. You know, I'm, I'm not. I don't think it's a MMO by any means. Yeah, but the, a single player type of scenario mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, uh-huh. there's a. So there's two things that excite me about this game. One, if they if they do this right, now granted, maybe they don't. Maybe they it's just its own thing. Maybe it's own standalone thing. But one is like it's on next gen consoles only, right? Like it's on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC only. So they don't they aren't having to like accommodate the older consoles, right? I know that's a big argument right now where like hey why are these games why are these new games coming out on older consoles and it's like a business decision whatever blah 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 but the division is still going strong apparently right like a a lot of people like that game that i don't know if you guys remember this but there was a sci-fi show on on tv called defiance and they made a game that ran alongside the tv show and whatever happened in that season of the TV show affected the events that happened in the game. Now, granted, both failed spectacularly, but that concept of, you know, the TV show affecting the game and then what happens in the game affects the next season of the TV show was like a really interesting concept that nobody had ever attempted before. And they actually got through two seasons of the show and uh, the game went on for five years. And that actually, like they pulled it off in a a weird way, right? If this game comes out during the second movie, right? And it kind of runs alongside the second movie and they're making what five, four sequels, five sequels, four supposedly, right? Like 27 sequels. Yeah. (laughs) But like they could do some really interesting crossover things with the movies and this game where like the movie comes out, maybe there's some kind of event in the game that, you know, crosses over with the movie and like, Hey, the characters from the second movie are now in the game as NPCs. They give you quests. You do missions for them. They go on missions with you. Uh, maybe you try to save them. And like some of the missions actually influence some of the storytelling that moves into the third movie or whatever. Like there's a really interesting way that maybe they could do that. I don't know if that's, possible in this day and age and like you know games take so long to develop anyway and they probably have some sort of roadmap and i know james cameron was involved a little bit with this game and sort of like fleshing out the world and making sure that this game was canonically correct so i think that's really an interesting thing that they could possibly do with this game that you can't really do with a franchise if you're not planning it out right so Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. Yeah, I, that would be that, yeah, that would be interesting. And that would actually that would actually just make me watch these movies if this game is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, it's, I'm it's, sure they'll be on Disney it, Plus at some point cuz Disney now owns everything, so. Yeah, well, if, if you think about it, it's kind of like, you know, like I mean, they could have technically did that with like Mass Effect too where, you know, like how you're you like how things change 
in the game, you know, like depending on what you do and then that those choices and that character, you know, tr- uh, transferred over to the next game, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like taking that, but to the next level, you know, where you're doing, mixing it in with an actual TV show. Yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. That would be neat. Yeah. Um, and since it's the developers of the division, I assume you can play this game by yourself or with friends, right? You could probably see other blue cat people running around the world and you can wave to them and, you know, hook up tails to each other. I don't know. I want that to be their official name, just blue cat people. I know. It's so much easier than, what are they called? What, what are they really called? Logan, uh, fact check that v- for me. It's a V tribe or a V tribe. Mm. Well, it, was it their tails or was it just their hair? I don't know. It was something that was, was attached to them being inserted into something else that was attached to something <laughs> else. So that's <laughs> that's enough that I needed. Kink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no kink shaming on the Boss Rush Network there, Block. Mm-mm. No, I'm I'm phrasing that. <laughs> There's no shame on that. That and uh, twerking grandmas, I think, would yeah. definitely mm. meet a theme here. Well, I'm choking your chicken. Dude, we talked about the goose choking and duck giraffe stuff yesterday. Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Instead of, an, instead of a really thought-out interview from Celeste this week, you're getting our ridiculous pre-show discussions on this sh- on Friday. So. Oh, gosh. That's going to be super embarrassing. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. We're an open book here on Boss Rush. It's fine. You do what you need to do, right? Leron, I told him it was a bad idea to swallow on his date today, and, and look now he's got Jesus! food poisoning. Even I would make that joke. So you know, it's, well, it if I gotta go before we get a. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, in, unless anybody really has anything to say about anything else that happened today, uh, I think that this is gonna wrap it up, right? Like, I think, I think, I think Ubisoft was. Yeah. Uh, how would we grade Ubisoft today? Because I think I think Gearbox Gearbox gets an F just because Randy Pitchford tried to do magic tricks and you know show <laughs> some stuff. Uh, even Ke- even Kevin B. Hart was like, "No, dude, pass." Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a B. It could have been an A had we gotten an update on Beyond Good and Evil or that game's Skull and Bones. Dude. Skull and Bones is the weird one. I think right. What because it should have been here if it's releasing next year, like we mm-hmm. keep hearing. I don't know. I'm I... still intrigued in Beyond Good and Evil Two. Yeah, mm-hmm. I checked yeah, out. Out of those two, out of those two, yeah, yeah. Out of those two, though, like those are the, like I think yeah. I'm I'm kind of the same Beyond Good and Evil. If they were to show me something, I would be excited, but. Skull and Bones. I honestly, I'll. I just. I don't think I was really too into it when they first showed it. The thing. The but... thing with Skull and Bones is like they were like, "Hey, we're taking the pirate stuff from Assassin's Creed Black Flag and making a pirate game finally." And I'm like, "Yes, Black Flag is the best Assassin's Creed game. I would totally play another pirate game." And they're like, "It's online only, and you. It's only the ship battles, and it's, <laughs> it's." multiplayer and you control a crew i'm like pass because that was not what i liked about that game uh, all I'll, right well i'll just stick with sea of thieves yeah right <laughs> well that's gonna do it for night two of boss rush at night e3 2021 i want to thank everybody in the chat for joining us uh shout out to nick from wasd and beyond shout out to cgg dragon from uh console gaming crew uh shout out to everybody in the chat who joined us david was in there at some point uh you know i again i want to applaud the writing team today for covering everything it was uh it was a big day i know uh tomorrow's going to be a huge day for a lot of people too with square and xbox and bethesda and and who else is going tomorrow i wb i think is only yeah i think WB. wb is only showing back for blood though they said none of the DC stuff's going to be there. That's being saved for DC fandom. Uh, no Harry Potter? No, nope. the, the new Harry nope, Potter No, they game? confirm Harry Potter's not going to be there, oh, which man. is another game I'm really excited for, and I'm bummed. Me we too. Don't... 
can we yeah, can we cool. can we you know wave wands at people together can we do a community yeah. harry potter game night when yes. that game comes out that sounds kinky yeah <laughs> I've, I've i've got, got some weird kinks block okay maybe we'll save that for a uh, boss rush after dark <laughs> i've got my i got my several boss rush at night so. yeah I've got my Severus Snape wand sitting over there that I got <laughs> from oh, nice. from the Harry Potter world. Uh, uh, he was he was my favorite character. I love him. Yeah, and as an actor too. He's yep. Just, yep. I was so bummed that when he when he passed away, that mm-hmm. sucked. Yeah. That day sucked. Great casting. Oh. Yeah. I awesome know. casting. Uh, Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Remember, you can find the pod clips and the stories that were written today. Uh, you can find them on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Bosch Rush Games. You can find all of the written articles that everybody did such a great job providing uh, on bossrushnetwork.com, bossrushgames.com. Download the podcasts. If you are listening to this on podcast feeds, you'll hear it in the morning, obviously. And then you can join us live on twitch.tv slash Bosch Rush Games Live if you want to watch it live. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review wherever you see our content. Thank you, Block. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Jesse, for joining me tonight on night two of E3 2021 coverage on Boss Rush at Night. Ooh. And we will see you tomorrow night to cover Xbox and Bethesda, Square Enix, the PC Gaming Show, and WB Games. Good night, everybody. Good night.